The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning to you here on this Finally Friday. I am Maddie Jansen alongside Alex Fisher. Our time now is 5.02. It was once again a deadly night in town as a man was killed in East Bakersfield. Deputies were called at midnight for a vehicle that had crashed into a stop sign in the area of Nile Street and Pisante Road. They arrived to find a person in the car unconscious, but breathing with a gunshot wound. KCSO says the person later died. We are still working to get more information and we'll give you an update as soon as we learn more. And also breaking this morning, police were investigating a deadly crash overnight in South Bakersfield. Officers were called to Hughes and White Lanes just after midnight. VPD says one vehicle ran a stop light while speeding and slammed into another vehicle. The driver of that vehicle that was hit died. No further information is available at this time. One emergency leads to another yesterday as a Bakersfield police officer drives through an intersection with lights and sirens on and slams into another car. The crash happened just before 830 yesterday morning at the intersection of Buena Vista Road and Ming Avenue. That's just down the street from BPD's West Side Station. Police say the officer was heading to another call for help with their emergency lights and siren on and drove through the intersection with the red light. At the same time, Police say a 17-year-old boy was driving through the intersection with a green light and it was hit by the officer's car. So the uh, officer condition is good? Yeah, officer's condition is good. Like I said, minor to moderate. And obviously we hope, it's, we hope it stays that way. And then for the, uh, the motorist of the other vehicle, moderate. And we're hoping it stays that way. Obviously we don't want this to become, their injuries become more serious. Both the officer and the 17-year-old were taken to the hospital. Your time now is 5.04 and a major and shocking update now on a story we've been following for several weeks. The search for Christian Gonzalez, owner of the downtown restaurant called The Spot, has led to Las Vegas. The sheriff's office says Gonzalez sold his vehicle in Vegas two days after he was reported missing and deputies are working with Nevada authorities to locate him. Gonzalez's family reported him missing April 27th after he failed to show up at the restaurant. Investigators are following up on additional reports of Gonzalez being spotted in Las Vegas. Anyone with information is asked to call the secret witness hotline at 322-4040. And the Kern County Sheriff's Department is asking for the community's help finding 34-year-old Israel Echeverria, who's considered at risk. Echeverria was last seen Wednesday night in the 3900 block of Fairmount Street. He's 5'11", 190 pounds with brown hair and brown eyes. If you have information on where he may be, call KCSO at 861-3110 or the secret witness number again is 322-4040. The coastal fire down south has destroyed 24 homes in the upscale Orange County neighborhood of Laguna Nigel. Around 900 people have evacuated. The Orange County Fire Authority says around 200 acres have been charred. The fire is now 15% contained. Two of the 550 firefighters deployed have been hurt, but are now out of the hospital. Meantime, the house fire has burned 171 acres in the area of Toll House and Pittman Hill near, hum near Humphreys Station. Cal Fire says it started in a backyard and spread to a hillside. Crews attacking the fire from every angle. Air tankers, helicopters, bulldozers, engine companies, hand crews, all those things compiled, you know, really gives us the advantage to, to start to put this thing to bed, you know, increase the containment and move forward towards, you know, wrapping it up and, and being prepared for the next one. Cal Fire also crediting property owners maintaining defensible space for keeping the fire away from homes. They expect to have the fire fully contained by this weekend. Governor Gavin Newsom is out with a proposal to spend more than $18 billion in the coming year to offset soaring inflation costs for millions of Californians. The governor said yesterday his intent is to leverage the state's historic budget surplus to get money back into the pockets of Californians. Included in the governor's inflation relief package, the budget includes tax refunds to help address inflation, including $400 checks to every eligible car owner. Billions are also set aside for emergency rental assistance for low-income tenants. 
There's also nearly a billion dollars in bonus pay to frontline health care workers of up to $1,500 per person. The governor's inflation relief plan is contained in his May revised budget, expected to be released later today. Education news now. It was a historic night last night for Bakersfield College as a record number of graduates walked the stage. The school's 108th commencement ceremony saw more than 1,700 graduates get their diplomas in front of family and friends. It's a new record for BC, the largest commencement ceremony in the college's history. And it happened, as you can see, at the newly renovated Memorial Stadium. It's also the first in-person graduation on campus since 2018 due to renovations of the stadium and then the pandemic. An estimated 12,000 people packed the stands to cheer on grads. The ceremony was live streamed on the KGET website and concluded with a fireworks show at the stadium. Congratulations to all of our local graduates. Thousands of nurses marched to the U.S. Capitol Thursday to bring awareness to the issues in the health care system. One local nurse flew across the country to take part. 17's Chris Burton is in studio this morning and caught up with her after the march. Chris, good morning. Yeah, Alex, Bakersfield nurse Larissa Ramirez says she felt compelled to use her voice to lift up her profession. Thursday morning, Ramirez marched with thousands of other nurses from the White House to the Capitol building. The group sought to raise awareness of workplace violence against nurses and build support for legislative measures ensuring safe staffing ratios and wage hikes. Ramirez says marching was invigorating, but there's more work to be done. It's nice to feel supported. It's nice to feel like people are behind you. But at the same time, I mean, the people can be behind us all they want until people are contacting their legislators and expressing their desire to make sure that their family members can be properly cared for. That would be phenomenal. Ramirez says she loves doing her job. She just wants to feel safe while doing it. And today marks the last day of Nurse Appreciation Week. We've had coverage kind of all week on this, but, you know, just a, a final day to recognize nurses and remember what they've gone through over the past couple years. Yeah, we hope that they're feeling the appreciation. They have done so much and just exhausted themselves for our community. Yeah. All right, Chris, thanks so much. The National Law Enforcement Memorial and Museum is holding its 34th annual candlelight vigil on, uh, or tonight in Washington, D.C., kicking off three days of activities honoring fallen officers and deputies. You're probably well acquainted with the name of one local man being honored, Kern County Sheriff's Deputy Philip Campus, who was killed in a SWAT standoff last July. Another local name is going up on that memorial this weekend as well. Here is 17's Robert Price with the story of Bakersfield CHP officer Scott Merritt. Last year was the deadliest for active duty law enforcement in nearly a century. 458 local, state, tribal, and federal officers killed in the line of duty in 2021, according to the National Law Enforcement Memorial and Museum's annual fatalities report. But the leading cause was not felonious assault, which killed 62 officers, including Kern County Sheriff's Deputy Philip Campus last July. Not traffic-related incidents, which killed 58 officers. No, the number one cause of death among law enforcement officers last year was COVID-19, which represented more than half of the overall total. Over the course of the three previous decades, the average number of law enforcement fatalities has been well below 200. But in this decade, due to spikes in all reported categories, it's now at an astounding 377, led by COVID-19 with 301. And that number is expected to grow as more COVID deaths are reported. One of those victims was a Bakersfield officer of the California Highway Patrol, Scott Merritt, who died September 10th, just 42 years old. Merritt grew up in Wasco and graduated as salutatorian from Wasco High School in 1997. He began his career with the CHP in 2005, first in Santa Cruz, then in 2010, Bakersfield. In 2014, he became a Drug Enforcement Agency Task Force Officer. His wife Shannon, children Madison and Nolan are in Washington for this weekend's events. Ah! Merritt's cousin, Jillian Bean, says they were like sister and brother. He loved what he did. Yeah. He was passionate about what he did. He never failed at anything. That's he didn't know great. how to fail, like in sports, in school, like anything. He didn't know how to give up. He was always on top. Law enforcement authorities say it's difficult to determine the likelihood an officer contracted COVID-19 during the commission of their official job duties and vaccination status was not included in the annual report. But this weekend, it's not about those numbers. 
For the Merritt family and those close to them, it's about one man, a husband, a father, a son, a colleague, Scott Merritt, one of 458 law enforcement officers taken before their time. In Bakersfield, Robert Price, 17 News. Bakersfield Congressman Kevin McCarthy yesterday continued his tradition of recognizing law enforcement by riding shoulder to shoulder with U.S. Capitol Police through the National Mall. According to McCarthy's office, the Back the Blue Bike Tour is a small but heartfelt gesture to show men and women in blue that they're supported and appreciated. Leader McCarthy also led officers and his congressional colleagues in a moment of silence for America's fallen police officers. Meantime, making headlines around the nation and the committee investigating the January 6th riot at the U.S. Capitol took the unprecedented step yesterday of issuing subpoenas to five Republican congressmen, including House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy. The subpoenas are believed to be the first congressional subpoenas of sitting two sitting members of Congress and will almost certainly be challenged in court. The panel has said that all five congressmen who are allies of former President Donald Trump have information critical to its probe. In a letter to McCarthy in January, Committee Chairman Benny Thompson said the panel wanted to hear about discussions the House GOP leader may have had with Trump in the days surrounding the riot, including a heated phone call with Trump on January 6th. But what are they going to learn? Congressman McCarthy was there. He uh, did like other members, tried to do whatever they could to calm it down. And within a couple hours, they were back voting on the floor. That's what everybody else that did bad got arrested. There's not a lot more to the story. Well, let's remember, he and other congressmen, they were way inside being protected in some corner room. We were watching it on television with cameras all over the place. They weren't. Uh, maybe they sat a TV in there. But let's be honest, there's nothing. He probably knows less about what was going on than those of us watching TV. McCarthy responded to the subpoena yesterday, saying his view on the committee has not changed and claiming the panel is not conducting a legitimate investigation. The House GOP leader has not said whether he will testify. And out of the coronavirus, as new cases rise once again across the state, a state Senate committee yesterday passed a bill allowing teens to get vaccinated without parental consent. The bill, also known as SB 866, passed in a tight 21 to 7 vote with multiple Democrats either not voting for or rejecting the proposal. The bill allows children ages 12 and up to get vaccines, not just against COVID-19, but other shots approved by the FDA. Opponents say parents should be involved in this important medical decision. If the parents don't know that the child got the vaccination, how would they know to even keep an eye out for it, to watch for it? If they are at their second job, maybe perhaps tell an older sibling or their caretaker, hey, keep an eye out for any, any of these sorts of symptoms in my child. They wouldn't know that. They wouldn't know that. And I think that is unfair and unreasonable to do to a child or to any parent out there who just wants to keep their child safe. Supporters say teens in California already have the ability to consent to other medical treatment like birth control and mental health. The bill now heads to the assembly for approval in that house before it can reach the governor's desk. News from around the nation and the community got the chance yesterday to see what it's like to be a Kern County Sheriff's deputy. Folks were invited to the sheriff's headquarters on Norris Road. They interacted with members of the air support unit, bomb squad, SWAT team and canine units and checked out training simulators. When a deputy is responding to a call for service, it's typically because someone's in danger, not because someone's having a good day. You never call the cops because you're having a good day. So having this opportunity gives, it, it sort of recharges the batteries for our deputies too so that they can have that positive interaction and so that people can have the po positive interaction. It's necessary. The sheriff's office only opens its doors to the public like this four times a year. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Next Star Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.